special day here at Speed House. We're working on putting a intercooler in this BMW 335i. So we'll see what we got here. We'll give you a walkthrough on how to put this in the car. So it looks like we have the, I don't know what size this is. It's not the big one, it's a medium sized one. It's gonna be a major difference from stock to this because this thing's absolutely massive. Um, first things first, we're gonna get the car up in the air. And I'll show you step by step how this is gonna go in. Okay, we're gonna demonstrate on how to take this bumper off. Fortunately for us, unfortunately for y'all, uh, there's nothing here that taps the bumper on the underside. But good news is I can demonstrate. Screw, 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 screw. That's so what you're gonna do. You're gonna take all these screws off, and attach them to the bumper that held the undershield off, undershield on. You normally would undo the fender liner. Fender liner's gone on this side, so we'll demonstrate on this side. Um, this sounds awful, I'm so sorry. Um, if you don't have any bolts here, just unclip your zip ties. It'll probably undo your fender liner. Just like that. That's how you're gonna undo the bottom of the bumper. Um, now we're gonna drop it back down. I feel like this is a bad car to show how to. So on each side of the car, you'll have to pull the fender liner down, which normally there's some screws holding it in. Today is another example of no screws. And there will be two eight mils that go right in here and here, underneath, back here, that hold the sides of the bumper in. Um, this one has two zip ties. Uh, as eight mils. So I'll cut them off and we'll go to the other side, and then it has the eight mils. So we'll give you all a good representation of how it should be. Okay, there's that side. There's one. I'll have a bracket here. Both sides of the bumper are released, as well as the underneath. Next step, after you've done the sides and the underneath, you're going to do the four T30s on the top of the bumper. In this case, we have three. That's okay, you'll probably have four. They're in there, not real tight, so hand driver like this will do just fine. Well, we have extra zip ties in this case. <laughs> oh Lord. I would like to say all E90s are not this way, but considering how old they are now on average, they're probably this way. Yeah. We're going to go up underneath the car and remove the factory intercooler. So there's a connection on either side of it. Um, this side, and the other side. The factory ones use clips. Um, this, these will use um, silicone hoses with clamps. Once we get underneath there, we'll show you what's going on. So we are now underneath the car and all that holds this intercooler in is an E30 here, E30 here, these two C clamps on each side. So depending on your car, there'll be a clip on top of this C clamp that holds it together. You'll have to pull the clip off. On this car, it does not have that. So we should be able to just pull the C clamp off without any issue. There's one. Maybe two. There's two. Not a T30. T25. Hmm. It's wrong. Yeah, I'm not gonna pull all these. Pull these all the way out. I'm just gonna loosen them. And then try to unhook the intercooler first from the piping. Not a pain in the butt. I have to get a flathead. So I can wiggle them out. Oh, there we go. Here's one. If they're tied in there, you'll use a flat head and you'll wedge it against. Get that to come out. See if we can get the second one. Might not be as easy. We got a flat head. So a flat head or little pry bar like this. I'm gonna go right here. And just like that, we got her to pop loose. That's all it takes on these, pretty simple. So now we can go ahead and pull the intercooler the rest of the way out.
things keep falling out of my hands today. And the rat's nest. Just like that. Stock intercooler is out. Very big difference. Side by side in here. She's big. So now what? So now we'll probably have to do a little bit of cutting because um, she's not going to fit. So this is the kind of hard part is you're going to have to cut basically a bunch of this stuff out. So we'll take the, what we like to do is we'll take the trans jack, we're going to jack it up, we're going to try to get a rough idea, we'll start cutting from there to get it to fit. So, right here so far, I'll tell you that we're gonna have to cut from here to here. All of this will have to come out. And we'll probably have to go a good ways up, probably all the way up to here at least. So from here to here to here will all have to come out in order for this to fit. So it's good to dry fit this to kind of give you an idea of where you need to start cutting or you don't need to cut, so now we'll get to cutting. First rough cut, and we'll probably have to trim some more. But what you need to know is this piece has got to come out. It's got to. We're not gonna get it in there. So, as we can tell, we're gonna have to cut some more off. So we'll have to cut probably all of this off here. So we're probably about right there, all the way down. Move we'll out on both sides and see if we're getting closer. Okay, so we now have everything cut for the intercooler. Um, the 850, this is the 850 wheel horsepower intercooler. Um, it does fit pretty good. I know on the 1000 wheel horsepower one, you'll have to cut um, all of this out, all the way up to roughly about here. You'll have to cut all of that out. So if you buy the seven and a half inch race intercooler, you'll have to cut even more out. But this is the 850 one, so it has a small step on it compared to the 1000 horsepower one. So, be prepared for that. Da, da, da. So our next step will be, we have to remove these factory pipes. So this one, there is a clamp on the very back. It's not really a clamp. We have to cut it off with a uh, cutting wheel. And then this one will remove, um, this already has an aftermarket charge pipe in it. So there's a clamp up top. We'll remove that clamp. Move, uh, remove this factory piece out and we have a aftermarket one that goes in there and aftermarket boots we'll show you those that after we get them out okay so now we're going to remove the fan i was going to try not to but i can't quite get the cutoff wheel in there without removing the fan and it'll make it easier on a few other steps once we're going to put the uh, aftermarket boots on so i'm going to go ahead and remove the fan it's not too bad on the manuals it's a little bit easier than automatics automatics there's one 225 that holds the trans cooler on the bottom you have to pull that 225 out and it'll pull the cooler off uh, it'll be really easy to see when you're underneath the car and then you're going to undo the cable to the fan and there'll be one 225 right over here there shouldn't be anything on this side and then you'll carefully remove this just push it out of the way if you're not careful, you'll break this nipple right here and you'll have to replace this whole entire um, coolant hose. So really try not to break this hose. And then there'll be a clip down in here um, that you will push. I don't know if Trevor's able to catch it where I'm at. 
this is a big step in removing this fan. This right here, where I'm squeezing, you'll have to take that and go back that way, inside towards the motor. That'll allow for the fan to come up. I'll have to pull that bolt, but that's a big problem with this fan. If you don't catch that, you'll pipe this fan all day. Okay, so let me grab a T25 and I'll get this fan pulled. So you'll have to pull this clamp here, loosen it up, remove the factory piece. Just like that. This will break under some some big boosts. This would go. These usually don't fail as much as the charge pipe. Charge pipe's already been replaced, so that's a good sign. But here's the old piece. I'll show you the new piece. Here's a new piece. Actual aluminum piece here. Basically, we'll replace that. You have two boots um, that'll go on here. Maybe one boot, I mean. It'll go something like that. Intercooler, charge pipe. Okay, see this clamp right here? It's not really a clamp because it's together as one piece. You're gonna have to cut through this, remove this whole piece here. So we have the fan out of the way. We're gonna take our circular cutoff wheel here. Carefully come through. We're gonna try not to cut anything else cut something else you're gonna have a bad day so now you can't go rip your car after putting your inner core in so this is what we just cut off with the cutoff wheel cut that band right there and uh, after that this thing just slides off so here's the replacement for this so you go from outlet to intercooler and then here's the replacement from intercooler to charge pipe. Roughly like that. So now we're gonna throw these both on here and uh, stab the intercooler. So the easiest way to do this is you're going to put this boot on the intercooler. And then that boot you're going to leave attached to the other hose, the other pipe. So you're going to stab this one in and stab that one on. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> this boot on the intercooler, that boot on the rest of the charge pipe. That should theoretically work out. So once you get it up here, they supply you with two Phillips. They're very long-winded, so it's your big uh, Phillips, and it's gonna take both hands. Just like that, the intercooler shouldn't fall out of the car. If it does, you got problems, big problems. Intercooler is now officially in the car. Um, we just went through and tightened all the clamps for all the boots. You need to really make sure you get all your boots really tight. Because if you don't, you're gonna have a boost leak and you're gonna struggle to find it because now the car is back together. So like, make sure all your boots are over the lips and all the pipes. You'll understand like filling the pipes and stuff. Um, and get those clamps pretty freaking tight. If they don't break them, then get them tight. Because if they're loose, you will have a boost leak. Especially you guys running aftermarket turbos, running you know, 25 pounds plus a boost, you're going to find that boost lake in a hurry. But if you're staying uh, on an OTS map, then you should be good as long as they're fairly snug. So now we're going to start putting the car back together. We're going to try to drop this fan in here. Um, if you're an auto car, it's a little bit more difficult because of the trans cooler that's in the way. Um, you're going to have to use like a pry bar or have somebody kind of help pull this back. 
because you need the fan to slide in between here, and if this is in the way, it'll catch it. You don't get your fan to go all the way down, so something to think about. Hands back in, just like that. I'll bring that side in around the headlight. Done. Let it go like that. <laughs> so now all we have to do is put the bolts back in the bumper, put the 200 million zip ties back on the bumper, and then boom. Theoretically, we are we are done. That'll be the um, this week's episode of Speed House from Nice to Rice, Rice, Rice to Nice. Apologize. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.